And now on the line is Senator Pauline O'Reilly from the Green Party. Pauline, welcome to the programme. Thanks a million. Pauline, I got in touch with you to do this interview today to talk about a couple of environmental issues to see how they are going at the moment from the point of view of government. Uh, As this is my first time interviewing you though, could you start off by telling our listeners on Near FM a bit about your background please and uh, how you ended up being a member of of, uh, Sean and Aaron? Thanks a million, Darren. Well, um, I was a councillor, I was elected as a councillor uh, first for the Green Party in Galway, and um, then I became a senator last year for, for the first time, so it's it's fairly new to me. Um, but I've been with the Green Party for nearly seven years, and uh, I'm, I'm passionate about the environment and about social justice, and it, it, was, the, it was the party for me because um, I really felt that it, it spoke the, the kind of language that I wanted to hear from politicians. And you're saying you're a councillor, you were a councillor in Galway. Your constituency is Galway West, I believe, is it? Yeah, it's Galway West, so it's a massive constituency. It's the whole of Galway City, uh, the whole of Connemara, out to the wild um, Atlantic, and it's the islands as well, the Aran Islands, um, and then some of, some of the east of the city as well, like Carnbridge and Clare Galway, that people will have heard of or visited indeed, because it's a beautiful county. Okay, 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 we move on. I didn't know before I got in touch with you to arrange this interview today, that, but I believe your party, the Green Party, are 40 years old this month, aren't you? That's right. Yeah, we're 40 years old. Uh, we were called the Ecology Party first, and um, some of our founding fathers and mothers are still in the party, which is great to have them. And um, so we, we had hoped to do some celebrating in person, um, but we have lots um, we have lots lined up for the year, and uh, we've done a couple of videos now from some of our fo- founding fathers. Uh, Tommy Simpson is one of them. Um, trade union. Man and uh, and strong North North uh, Dubliner, and um, so we're we're honoured to to have him still in the party, and he's he just a uh, um, so much energy, <laughs> and okay. um, yes, yeah, so it's, it's very exciting for us now. And my job is to make sure that we keep doing our work for the next forty years to protect the environment and to protect people. Okay, we move on to talk about a couple of environmental issues. Um, can you tell me, Pauline, if you and the Green Party are happy with what was agreed at the recent COP26 in Galway? In, in Glasgow? Oh, Glasgow um, sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, I, I made that mistake myself uh-huh. a little bit. Um, I, I was over in COP myself, um, and I suppose going into COP, we kind of knew that it was going to be limited agreements as such um, there was some disappointment at the end that China kind of pulled the plug on some of the wording um, around divestment from coal but I believe an awful lot was achieved at the same time and from my perspective um, I sit on the Climate Action uh, Joint Oireachtas Committee and from my perspective a lot of the work done was in meeting with people from different uh, parts of the world and different parliaments um, and I had been to Italy as well where because it was both Italy and the UK that were running COP this time. So there were things like, um, for instance, that um, there was was an agreement with some countries to divest from oil and gas and to encourage others to do so. And Ireland was one of the first six to, to sign up to that, but loads more have joined since. Um, there was an agreement around ending deforestation and turning back the clock and planting more trees around the world. And 100 countries signed up to that and uh, Brazil signed up to it for the first time so the, there was an agreement in 2014 but some of those countries like Brazil and Russia and China didn't sign up and this time they did so that's real progress in the right direction and uh, from the point of view of of ourselves in, in Ireland um, Eamon Ryan was given the honour of doing some of the um, the negotiations on behalf of the EU so again that was an honour and I, it just shows that Ireland's come a long way, and particularly over the last year, we've got a Climate Act passed that is the envy of an awful lot of countries around the world, and uh, and now we have a Climate Action Plan. So it's exciting times, mm. um, but we're going to have to we're we're going to make it, I think, and um, just all working together to try and have better public transport, better air quality, and um, and better houses that are better insulated. So it's it's a win-win from the point of view of people's health 
and well-being as well. But look, it does cost a lot of money and um, we've already done a huge amount of investment. But it'll be, overall in the end, it'll be cheaper and save save people money. Yeah, it's great there that you said uh, that Brazil have signed up to a deforestation target. Whether they meet their commitment, I don't know if they will or not. But uh, um, and you mentioned like the deforestation, loads of countries have signed up to it. Can you tell me, Pauline, when or if it is likely that in Ireland we will have a lot more reforestation? And I don't mean like commercial reforestation. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it is our plan to have a, a lot of that done by 2030. And um, But I think there's a balance to be struck. We do need some for commercial um, work and for building, but we also need some for the, to, to protect our soils and um, for biodiversity to have different kind of plants and animals there. So, um, look, the work is ongoing. There has been a backlog, and indeed it was a backlog when we joined government that we have to sort out. And um, we have this this task force now called Wood um, called the Woodland um, Project. I can't, um, can't remember the the, the exact title, mm-hmm. but um, and it's got four kind of streams to it, and um, that you know one of those is about nature, one of those is about commercial, and so on and so forth. So that works ongoing. Um, uh, but clearing the backlog for people to be able to plant is really, really important. Um, and also, we're doing a lot of negotiation at the moment around the CAP strategic plan. So that's on the common agricultural policy for the EU to make sure that we get money so that we can really pay farmers and pay landowners to do that work. Because at the moment, um, you know, that that's the piece that needs to be resolved to make sure, as I say, it's not all commercial woodland. Um, and there are some parts of the country that have been devastated mm. by overplanting of commercial uh, woodland, and I think some of the places like Leitrim, for instance. So that's not what we want to see. And in some parts of the world, that was the approach that they took to replanting and to afforestation, and that is definitely recognised now as not the best approach. So do you think we'll actually see a change in places like Leitrim so these kind of commercial forests will be taken, will be got rid of? Like, Well, they're not going to be got rid of entirely because we do need commercial uh, forests and I think we also need people to feel like it pays them uh, to, to do that kind of work. So th- there needs to be a, a balance. But I think if we could have mixed, um, mixed forestry and uh, if people could cut down partially so that you're not going in and just clear felling a whole area but actually you're doing you know picking out some trees and cutting them down that way that's the best way to protect um to protect the area and uh and the other thing is that like it does have an impact on our carbon emissions as well um some of that work so we, we just have to have to be really conscious of that yeah, we could talk all day about the environment. We haven't got the time to go through a lot of it all in depth today. But um, you mentioned biodiversity there a minute ago. I have an interest in this area, although I'm by no means an expert on the issue. Uh, last month, a man, Donald Sheehan from Cork, made a very strong presentation to, an Iraq, to your Rockets Committee, I think it was, on the matter of biodiversity and farming. And I understand that this week there is some other news with biodiversity in Ireland going forward into the future. Can you tell me, Polly, what what is the situation with biodiversity policy by the government going into the future? Yeah, well, a, a couple of things that we're doing, and one of those is around having, um, trying to get every farm to have an area, part of their, their farm for biodiversity, and that the government would pay for that to happen. So that's one part of it. And when it comes to some of the, the people who've uh, come to our our uh, Joint Rockets Committee, um. They, that's what they've been doing, and the Bride Project is down there in Cork, uh, as I say, and that's uh, that's big dairy, a big dairy area. But they've managed to do this project so that they're having um, parts of the farms that um, are used for biodiversity, and they've found that they are producing better quality uh, product um, on the rest of their farm. Um, and these kind of schemes are the things that we'd love to roll out more. I certainly would. There are other projects as well. There's one in the Burren, um, and which isn't about dairy. So um, these 
are actually Ireland is a world leader when it comes to these kind of schemes, these kind of what's called re- results-based schemes. You know, if you're performing well, you get paid. Um, and so I uh, I would love to see more of that rolled out. And again, that comes down to European funding and uh, ensuring that we have farmers paid, um, and small farmers in particular, paid for the work that they do to preserve biodiversity because, um, you know, nobody's going to do it unless it, uh, you know, they can feed their family and do it at the same time. So mm. I believe that, like, at the moment, farmers are um, sub- uh, subsisting really on grants um, and that means that it isn't actually really paying um, if we had a better type of of, uh, of approach to the grants. That's what I think can turn that around. And also in biodiversity, there was an announcement earlier this week, wasn't there extra funding for the councils or something like that? Do you know what I mean? Um, there was an announcement. God, there's so many announcements for, for, on for, funding. But believe, one, believe one of them is on officers. Yeah, yeah the biodiversity officers. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's go on, yeah. yeah, so actually when I was on the council in Galway, um, we did fund a biodiversity officer. It's taken a couple of years for that actually to happen. Um, probably because we put the money in as councillors ourselves, whereas what this project is, is it's providing a fund now and ca- and councils around the country can apply um, to have to, to use this fund to get biodiversity officers for their, um, for their um, local authority. And it makes a massive difference. You know, the type of, for instance, the... Um, how grass is cut, whether there's some planting done, and the green outside my house now, there's um, there's a, a little patch of wildflowers, and that's all the council's work that they've done. And um, the, there's a thing called the All Ireland Pollinator Plan, and there's a specific part of that for councils to roll out. Um, and it's it's doing things like having wildflowers in verges, on roundabouts. Uh, all of that can make a huge difference, N- not just not just for the biodiversity um, that it helps to um, support, but also just people see it, you know, and then they go, oh, that looks nice. I'll try that. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a win-win all around. So our minister, Malcolm Noonan, who's the minister in, in that area, um, and he's Green Party minister, has been pushing really hard to get the funding uh, from government for these biodiversity officers, and that's happened now. But I think there's an awful lot, of, uh, you know, support that, that officers like that can do for for people. And I believe um, that every council in the country have applied to get a biodiversity officer, have they? Um, I'm not. I haven't checked the list now to see which ones have and haven't applied. But that's that, that's a good point because before last year we provided funding for 217, uh, or no, it was 260 um, uh, cycling. A staff for around the country, so that all councils would have staff uh, to to implement cycle lanes and that, um, and then we're kind of finding not every council was applying. So we have to push as the public, um, as politicians, to make sure that they're applying for the funding when when it's being announced. Okay, I won't keep much longer, uh, Pauline. It sounds like a great idea to me to have biodiversity officers in every council in the country, but the uh, m- money allocated to them for 2022, 1.5 million in total for the whole country, seems to me to be very small given the potential we have for all the green space in the country. Can you tell me if you using the Green Party uh, plan to increase the funding for this biodiversity programme in the council over the next uh, few years? Well, we certainly, we'll take any money we can get um, and we're a small party in government so we have to push hard each time we want to get funding for these things. I think if the public really get on board and if every council applies, that's going to really help us to be able to push for more funding um, from the from the central pot. Um, it's not enough for, for one everywhere, I don't think, but at the same time, it's a good start and something that wasn't there before. If it works, I would imagine that there'll be more funding for one in future budgets. Um, so I think that, um, yeah, it, it's a start and uh, let's see it really come into action. I think people could travel from constituency to constituency, from council area to council area and say, hey, 
this council doing a really good job in biodiversity and uh, I think it'll catch on as well.